Hey there fishing freaks, welcome to today's video. Now to give you guys a short update on me, I'm about to head out to the doctor in Houston, Texas right now and he's gonna give me some more updates on how everything's going, but I think we're gonna be happily surprising the doctors up there. All your positivity, prayers, and support have helped me just get better even quicker. So just quick thank you to you guys. So tomorrow I'll be able to give you an update as we go to the doctor, me and Ocean Spoon Girl, and give you guys more information about how everything is progressing with the old head here. And before we get into today's video, I just want to congratulate Austin Miller uh, for winning the Piranha Tooth Necklace. Thank you, my friend, for your awesome comments. I know you watched the uh, the whole Amazon series. I saw you enjoyed it, read your long comment, thought it was awesome. So I just want to get this out to you, man. So I'll be responding to your comment and we'll make sure to send this out to you, man. Appreciate you. Now on today's video, this is gonna be a long format video. Just wanna give you a disclaimer on this. This is gonna be kind of a video you wanna chill, just set this back. You know, let it play in the background maybe. I included a lot of awesome B-roll and some things I never included in the Amazon series. So this is gonna be a really cool video for you guys to get more behind the scenes footage and some longer extended footage that I didn't include in the Amazon series, but it is really long. So if you're like me, you like to listen to podcasts in the car while you're doing other stuff, you can download the, the audio version in the description below here but if you just want to chill put it on the youtube put it on your tv get some of the amazing footage uh, that i never included in some of the other videos just let it chill and play but it's pretty long so just to give you guys a forewarning there's a lot of great juicy stuff in here i actually enjoyed putting this together and going back and just reviewing it it's kind of like a flashback to the whole amazon thing so this is like a, a total conclusion you can go back you can watch the series but there's a lot of good stories in here that i didn't include so enough jabbering on let's get to the podcast make sure you subscribe if you want to see more of the podcast series and stay tuned for more brain tumor stuff here we go check one two check one check 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 Check, 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 check it out. I am, think am I on the screen? Yep. Video check? Oh, no, am I? Huh? Video check? Visual check? Yeah. Are we good? Visuals and Perfect. audios are good. Yeah, we're good. All, All right, right, you bring us into this one. My gosh. <laughs> Woo! <sighs> we are podcasting up a storm tonight. I think it's only right, you know. We, uh, we don't do many of these in person, so... Hopefully that continues to be a trend, but it's it's just way more fun, way more fun, and we get props, dude. Visual props. This is our first time videoing. We got Welcome. to have pizza before. Uh, we yeah, don't, we don't get pizza before we do a Skype podcast. This is, this is the way to do it, man. Yeah, for sure. I envision we're uh, you know one day down the road. Me and Stephanie have kids. We have got like kids playing. There's there's cooking happening. There's just podcasting, and then we're just we're sitting around a bunch of like dead animals, um, yeah. like mounts, like fish, and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. But um, thank you guys for tuning in. If you're an audio listener, go ahead and just uh, sign up for the uh, the notifications. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, if you're a visual 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 watcher, uh, welcome welcome to the channel. This is. The second of uh, second podcast of the night, so we're having fun. Yeah, and if you're watching this on uh, your channel, on Justin's channel, go uh, subscribe on iTunes because we have a lot more episodes of this podcast. Yeah, there's probably going to be a lot of people that are just finding out about the Hook and Arrow podcast right now from this video episode, um, so you can go down in the description box and I will leave a link down there that has a link to the iTunes where you can uh, subscribe to the podcast and hear all the tasty episodes that we've recorded so far. But just loving the visual experience, man. Dude, it's, it's, good. It, it's way better to do this in person. But, uh, you know, we've been doing this thing a little over a year now. And I, I think this is only the third podcast or fourth that we've actually recorded in person. And yeah. we're, I think we're just going to have to go to... Now that you're up in Dallas a lot, I think we're just going to have to go to mostly in-person podcasts. Yeah, man, I'd like to, I mean, that's, that's that was actually the whole plan was uh, me and Stephanie were doing a little house hunting up here uh, a few months ago, up, up until the 
brain tumor diagnosis, uh, which people on people on my uh, YouTube channel already know about. But for all the podcasters out there, you can uh, you can go watch the series of videos and hear about it. But while you are uh, watching this, is when I am uh, I'm actually recovering. So um, wish me a happy recovery. <laughs> Hopefully I'm okay right now. I'm speaking to my future self. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna be good, dude. Beautiful scar and my shaved, trendy haircut. They're just gonna shave my head. They're gonna shave it. Um, it's kind of popular nowadays in the in the trendy community. You go down to like Austin, you see like buzz sides and then the quaff. Yeah, long on top. You seen that? You yeah, seen that a lot? yeah, just like a comb over up top with the, like the skin shave sides. Yeah. Yeah, it's like um, 40s haircut coming back for some reason. Yeah, but, uh, dude, you're you're gonna be looking fly. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about just keeping it long on top and doing that. Um, you know, maybe just wearing a lot of like REI stuff. Um, yeah, and just be sandals, trendy. lots of sandals, a lot of sandals, not flip flops though. They have right. to be those like mountain climbing, like Chaco sandals. type yeah, chocos, sandals. Yeah. Um, and just maybe get like a little hipster backpack and grow a rat tail, something just long it out in the back <laughs> maybe. And, um, I'll go hang out under a bridge in Austin and, uh, maybe eat some good food down there. Yeah. Fit in. For sure, man. Well, for those of y'all on the LFG channel that don't know, you know, what this is that we're doing here. <laughs> probably could probably some are confused <laughs> if you haven't watched the the first one yeah. that I put up already. Welcome to the Hook and Arrow podcast. Me oh, me and baby. Justin started this about oh a little over a year ago. Yeah. Uh we have had quite a few downloads. We actually hit 100,000 downloads recently on the podcast, which Congratulations. That's, it's like 99 thousand nine hundred ninety nine more than I expected. So uh, we should have uh we should have made it like a cake or something to present yeah. on video. We could have blown out the <laughs> candles. Would have been more excuse to eat eat food. Yeah. But so on this podcast we pretty much just talk about what we want to talk about. Uh it's evolved a little bit. I mean at first we kinda had like a more of a I don't know. I don't know what our structure plans were. a very it loose was, structure. Was, yeah. We had a loose structure. Now it's just kinda we just have conversations and yeah. let let the conversation determine the the atmosphere. I think that works out a lot better. Uh, you know, past episodes we've talked about, you know, different hunting and fishing techniques and told stories. And now I think, yeah, it's just kind of more evolved. Well, stories into, is always good. Yeah, it's it's more of stories, conversations, just what we're we're thinking about in the world. What I like to hear on podcasts is I like to hear stories that are just kind of like spur of the moment. Um, and then also I like to hear about things that are like really useful in in life that, um, you know, like a friend would tell you about. Like, hey, I just saw this thing on the news last night. That's it, I went and got one. It's awesome. Or, man, I, I picked this thing up from the store and it's so cool. And for uh, for outdoorsmen, I think we can do that if we pick up on things. Uh, we'll just share it. it. Doesn't have to be a sponsor. We don't really have official sponsors. Yeah, the podcast so, is uh, unsponsored, so we can pretty much talk shit about whoever we yeah, want. We can keep it real on this thing, <laughs> no problem. So, um, so I like that. I like that aspect. And tonight's a juicy one because we've got uh, we've got a lot of stuff in this little podcast area right now, a uh, lot of a lot of visuals to tell stories with, but some big time adventures. Yeah, probably like huge prob life adventures. We probably have two trip of a lifetime stories to tell in one podcast. Definitely, probably two of the you know biggest trips that we've ever taken in our life. Yeah. Uh, I've definitely been to further places than uh, where my trip takes me on this episode, but uh, just the amount of growth just in life that I made on this trip, uh, how I was challenged, you know, just it was definitely by far the, the craziest trip I've ever taken. I, I would 100% agree with my trip, which makes it awesome. We, we probably should have spaced this out, but you know what? <laughs> 
it's just going to be extra juicy. This so. may be this may end up being a little longer than our normal podcast. But I that's think okay. it's deserving of it though. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. So, I guess. Um, what story do you want to tell first? Let's start with yours. Want to start with mine? Yeah, we'll start with yours and hook the fishing freaks on oh. uh, on the video here. Okay. And then maybe they'll stick <laughs> around for my story. <laughs> we'll stick around while we're holding the fish and hear about the hunting stories. Um, so, yeah, this is Hook and Arrow podcast. So, this is like definition yeah. of Hook and Arrow right here. Last like two episodes. Form. This I would put these two stories up against any... Uh, Outdoor show, Discovery Channel, out there. Oh, for sure. I would. So let's get down to the chase. So I was actually fortunate enough to be able to uh, go down to South America and go to the Amazon, the Amazon River, uh, take a, a really a long trip. I was gone, um, I think it was 12 days down there with travel and, and fishing and all that. And I was invited by uh, Favorite Fishing. Uh, it's a company uh, that I work with. And um, uh, we do a lot of cool stuff together. But th- this was a trip that was designed to be kind of like a product testing deal. Uh, but also just a, like a fun deal. And then also kind of a like a promo. Uh, we went with this uh, outfitter. It's called Ron Speed's Adventures, and they do uh, Mexican bass fishing trips, and they also do this one, and they've got a really good long-standing record of, uh, you know, not having anybody die or... uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's that's know, pretty important funny. when you're going yeah. down there to the Amazon. It is. It sounds funny, but it's actually true because I, I was looking up some other outfitters, and there were some some other outfitters that, w- you know, people had gotten lost and, and died or, you know, they just – they later died of diseases, you know, because there's a lot of, a lot of uh, stuff that, you know, you're just not used to down in the Amazon. Um, and so you were down there going for peacock bass, correct? That's right. That's right. So the peacock bass was the main uh, the main deal to go after, but there's tons and tons and tons of other species. The main thing I didn't really fully grasp about the Amazon River uh, was, you know, it used to be a lot of salt water. So you got fish in there like um, just crazy fish that you'd find in the ocean there's flying fish in there uh there's dolphins there's sharks um and then you got your your things that you typically think of with the amazon you got your alligators and um other animals like that and then but the the main one is like the peacock bass the uh the piranhas the big red-tailed catfish the big catfish things like that so a lot of exciting species uh, but getting there was also a journey. So we flew from Miami to Manaus. Uh, Manaus is a, a pretty big uh, city uh, down there in Brazil. And uh, as soon as we got in there, uh, which was like 5 a.m. in the morning, um, like right away, getting up the next, uh, we took a nap for like a couple hours. We got up. Just hearing birds I'd never heard before. Just my alarm clock on my iPhone is actually like uh, the the sounds of the Amazon. It was so weird because I was I'm used to waking up home at home to that sound every day, and when I actually woke up there, it was weird. Like my alarm clock was <laughs> going off, and the birds were singing, and the hotels there were open air, so you had you had like a air conditioning unit in the hotel room. And then, like, your bathroom was open air, and then the whole entire inside of the hotel was open air. So, you could just hear birds constantly. So, that was kind of different. So, I think a little side note, an interesting side note to this whole thing is uh, me and you actually caught our first peacock bass ever together. That's true. In Florida. My gosh, that is true. With Captain yeah. Shane. Yeah, Captain Shane uh, and Black Tip H down there. Josh, we... Yep. We went on a trip in one of the lakes down there in Florida, and uh, Stephanie was with us, and we we crushed them. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think I called it that, that. I recorded that, and I called it like tickling peacock bass. Yeah. Because apparently you can like tickle them in their fins, 
stand up, but um, but but this probably, was a different peacock yeah, bass. Yeah, I were was chasing. gonna say like that's probably what a lot of people think of when they think peacock bass. Like, oh yeah, we got those here, Florida, South Miami, or whatever. Um, it's not the same fish, uh, not not even in the slightest way. Um, those peacock bass, like a really big one down there in Florida, is five pounds, and a small one in the Amazon is five pounds. Yeah. So that's that's very different. And they just grow massive. There's multiple different species. Uh, a really huge one uh, is considered like 20 pounds. That's like the mega trophy. You know, that'd be like killing a 200-class uh, buck. Yeah. Um, but the the river, like actually getting there, was kind of an adventure we were on like a river boat type situation you've seen like those those gambling boats on the mississippi and they got the wheels yeah one of the the wheel boats that they're the paddle boats with right. the wheel in the back that yeah. just kind of flings the water that's uh we ended up getting on one of those from the hotel it didn't have the uh the wheel but it had uh, like a diesel engine and it was four stories so it was all it was a custom built boat and it was called the otter and we got on this otter, and then it had, uh, I think, like, eight. I think it had eight aluminum boats trailed behind it, like bass tracker boats. They had them in chain behind. And so we took off down this river, and we went for a day and a half just trucking. And I got to see where the Rio Negro and the Amazon converge. It's the two largest rivers in the world. It's really cool. I put a picture up on my Instagram page of it where you can see like the two different colors coming together. It's more of a clear and then just like this muddy and there's a huge line of convergence and it's just massive, massive, like 20% of the world's fresh water is in the Amazon. Wow. And it ranges as wide as the United States is. So that's how massive it is. And it's moving constantly like it's dropping a foot a day while we're there so it's just a lot a lot of moving water so that was kind of cool to see and then we ended up getting in to uh some smaller like creek areas you know like you'd have like we think of like a river and then you got back bayous um that's that's kind of how it is on the amazon except a bayou might be uh you know gigantic it could go up for days and days and days um, but the time of year down there, it's the dry season. So, um, all that water's kind of falling out, out of the forest. So it's the best time to go. Uh, we were the first, first boat out, um, for the dry season. So there wasn't like a, a lot of Intel on, Hey, the fish are here. It was kind of like we were on an exploratory deal to, to find the best, uh, lagoons and, and bayous for these peacocks. And um, it was, I think, seven days of just straight fishing, hardcore fishing. It Up was at daylight, down uh, in the dark. Yes, uh, but it, it's it's only twelve hours of daylight there. It's on the equator, so the sun comes up at at five thirty, and then it sets at five thirty. Um, and my gosh, we'll talk about like. Just, just living good on a boat. I was thinking <laughs> this was the the biggest shocking thing for me. I was thinking we were going to be like maybe in some hammocks, and I I <laughs> soaked all of my clothes in permethrin bug spray, and you know I already had the the yellow fever shots, and I had I had my malaria pills, um, and I got like uh, it was like hepatitis shots and all sorts of stuff before i went down there and we're sitting here on this like it's not a luxury boat but as far as like a fishing camp boat it's pretty amazing they've got a they've got a cook on board they've got uh a, a, like a maid that comes around and does your laundry every day and folds it up and, like tucks your tucks your little underwear like folds it all nice on the on the bed it's all laid out for you <laughs> and it was amazing and, and like all the all the fruits and stuff down there that are so good they just pick them right off the the trees and they squeeze fresh you know fruit juice for you and bananas and plantains whatever you want and uh just hearty hearty breakfast go fish come in for lunch hour or two eat a huge meal again 
go back out, fish till the sun sets, come back in, get yourself another huge meal, and, and go to bed early. I mean, we went to bed like 8.30 or 9 every night and just kind of did that whole process over and over. But the fishing aspect of it was actually a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be because the whole, you know, we had a day and a half of talking of just straight talking before we even made a cast on this boat. And all I could hear about was, you know, this is our first trip in, uh, you know, the, the peacocks, there could be thousands of them and they haven't seen lures. I mean, the, the forest has been flooded and now they're out of the forest. And I'm just thinking like, Oh my gosh, like it doesn't matter what we could, we could throw a beer can out there and they might eat it. <laughs> Uh, but it actually turned out that they were kind of picky and it was a lot harder to catch them than, uh, I thought. So the, the crazy lure that everybody throws down there, I don't have any exact one. It's called a wood chopper. This is actually a, uh, a tuna popper. This is the lure I threw while I was down there, but it's basically chunking big top waters like this all day. If you want to catch a big one. Like, you can catch fish on pretty much anything, jigs, jerk baits, um, you know, plastics and stuff like that. But if you want to catch a big peacock bass, you better have a big top water on, and you better be working it as hard as you can. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, we're saying that it's a completely different fish than those yeah. ones down in Florida. Actually, it's more like job, that, job. like that size. Oh, good God. Like the wood chopper. I, I kept the one. It's at it's at my house. I'm going to get it, like, with one of the ones I caught, like a mount. But it's got a huge propeller on the end, and it, it kind of, like, dives down just a few inches and just has, like, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. And you're just ripping that thing all Large day. Can, all day. So you got to have uh, a pretty good rod. I was actually throwing a uh, a favorite big sexy. The the rod I liked the best down there when I was doing it was a 7.3 extra heavy. And uh, I threw it with 65 to 80 pound braid. I had a couple of those combos rigged up. And uh, it was basically just like a, like a flipping stick. Yeah. That's what it was. And we were just ripping those things all day. Some of the guides I went out with, they they would just try to go after big fish, and you just did that all day. And other ones, they would try to get some numbers. And quite honestly, I would put it down sometimes and say, like, no, I don't want to chop chop anymore. That's what they would say. Because <laughs> it's Portuguese. We're talking about Portuguese language. Uh, Spanish doesn't really cross over that much, surprisingly. So... Uh, there was a language barrier, and um, so they called the throwing the big bait chop 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 chop. Yep, you pull up to an area, they say chop chop, and you get <laughs> that thing out, and you know you chop chop chop, and you'd be like, "Ma'am, no more chop chop, please." And they say <laughs> chop chop. Uh, they say uh, pescados. Uh, what was it granja? Granja is big, and then granja pescados. You know, chop, chop. So that's, you know, we were saying how different those fish and the Florida fish are. When we were fishing Florida, we were literally throwing two-inch shiners. With light, like spinning tackle. With like tackle, spinning, light tackle, light spinning tackle, like seven or like eight to 12-pound test, yeah. like super lightweight. Like, and I've heard stories of how those fish in Florida, they won't eat big baits. And, yeah. you know, here you are fishing out the Amazon. That shows how different these fish are because if you're going to catch a big one, you got to throw... You know, a eight, ten, twelve inch top water to get these things to eat it. Yeah, and and to set up like the visuals and everything, it was. Uh, I mean, you're looking at the jungle, which is really cool. But you know, at the old river line, when the water falls, you've got tree stumps, and that's that's where the big fish are uh, usually hanging out. Uh, and they'll say, uh, you know, throw throw the try to say like throw tree tree um and you throw to those freaking trees i mean just like lake fork or another lake that's got a lot of big trees in it yeah and you just <laughs> rip it by those trees and they'll they'll come up so are you trying to almost like parallel the shore or are you kind of more cast into specific targets or was it more fan no. casting areas they keep you like far out 
sucked. Really? There was many times where I threw all the line off my reel. Wow. Like, I really had to make sure I taped it down, but I was throwing such a heavy plug. But they would keep you far off because a lot of times they'll they'll see it, but they won't actually attack it. They'll come chase it. So they may not hit it right there where you throw it. They're going to hit it, like, more close to the boat. And that's why they they keep the boat out that far. And it just makes for a brutal grind trying to fish, you know, all day like that. Yeah, and when you're throwing a bait that big, though, you can cast that far without any issues. You oh, know? yeah. I mean, especially the way those Shimano's cast. Yeah, you think about um, throwing a swim bait, basically. Like, that's kind of the gear. Like, not a giant swim bait, but... Uh, you want something more comfortable that you can work, you know, top water, but uh, you need a. Bless you. <laughs> you need like a you need like a big rod that you can easily handle. Yeah, so like almost like a frog length rod, but yeah, way heavier action. Yeah, sixty-five to eighty pound braid, the biggest thing that i wish i had was like a super high speaker ratio reel i was throwing a seven to one and i needed like a nine to one yeah yeah were you throwing more of like a, a bigger a 300 size reel or no hundred or were you no. just throwing regular bass size reel i had uh i had two reels with me i had a uh i had a favorite uh prototype reel it was like uh not quite a 200 size, it was more like a 150 size. And then uh, I had a Shimano Calais DC, which I could like chunk a mile. <laughs> it was one of the old ones that had a pretty wide, wide spool on it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just like a really tough reel. It was really heavy. Um, I just wish they were, they were faster gear ratios because when you make that really long cast and you've got like no line on your reel and then you're trying to... <laughs> You can't work it that fast. It's like, <laughs> but in between you're reeling like this. Yeah. Just to try to catch up with all the line you're taking up each time. But when a fish would hit it, dude, it was like the hardest hit I've ever seen on a lure by far. That's one of the things I was wondering because, you know, there's two ways a fish can hit a bait. A moving bait, I would say. You know, there's that fish that hits it, and they hit it so hard that it knocks slack in your line. Yeah. And it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't really, you know, jar you. And then there's that bite where they latch on and almost jerk the rod out of your hand. And I was yes. curious how, how that bite was. I never, even on the little ones, I never had a bite that was like, oh, I think I might have one. They were all just hitting it going the opposite way. And when a big one would hit it, you'd really have to check your grip because uh, it could jerk the rod right out of your hand. <laughs> I, it's just going the other way. And they have these they have these dolphins out there, these pink dolphins that are swimming around. And every area we got into that was good fishing had these pink dolphins. And they would try to eat the peacocks. So like, As they were on your line? Yeah. Really? Try, or when you let them go, like when they're tired. Um, but that's one of their natural food sources. So, like, when they're feeling resistance, they're freaked out because there's a pink dolphin nearby <laughs> that might be trying to eat them. So uh, they just they just fight like the Dickens, man. They fight like the Dickens. There was actually a, there was one time there was a bush. It was, like, the size of this room. And the peacock bass were jumping into it, like, you could see them jumping into the bush and they were trying to get away from the dolphins. Like they were literally jumping in and flopping around in the bush to try to get away from dolphins that were circling around the bush. That's crazy. Yeah, it's wild down there. I think Joe Rogan has a bit about dolphins and just how smart dolphins are. Because if you think about it, how many people fish around where dolphins are? No one ever catches a dolphin. Oh, yeah. No, you'll never catch one. Like, they, they know what a lure is. Yeah. Well, I mean, even like live bait. Like, you never catch a dolphin even on live bait. Like That, too. I, I think it's, it's something it's, about their echolocation. It, it's insane. Like, they're just, it's crazy how smart they are. And I don't know about these river dolphins. They kind of seem like dolphins that got a little left behind in the, uh, the evolution spectrum. <laughs> you know? They got, like, this weird lump on their head, and they're just, like, ugly. They look, they look like a bloodshot eye. 
Really? Kind yeah. of like a cross between a beluga <laughs> whale and a yeah. dolphin. Like if like if a dolphin just got, you know, thrown out in the streets and was on like a twelve day drunk. That's kind of <laughs> what these Amazon River dolphins look like. They're pretty gnarly. But they were literally pink? Like literally pink, dude. They would come pink. up and they would literally they had like that bloodshot eye pink look to them. And be uh, damn. They would uh they would come up by the boat and they just they would just want food, man. They chased those peacocks down. And then they also had like gray porpoises that would come up and jump and they, they but they were like midget porpoises, not like the big ones you see. They were mm-hmm. tiny so they could just fly, you know. Did the dolphins seem friendly like the dolphins we have in the States? Like were they coming close to the boat like interested um, in you or was it kind of more um, Yeah, a little bit. Like they, they would kinda of come by and They'd look at you a little bit, and they'd you know blow their nose and stuff, um, tooth their little blow holes. But uh, they were really just they were feeding every time we saw them. So yeah, that's crazy. They weren't like like flipper. Yeah, I've heard stories of a pink dolphin in Louisiana. I've seen like news stories and stuff. There's like a it's like a baby pink or oh, really? like bright baby pink dolphin like there's pictures of it and stuff i'm telling you they exist <laughs> and they're fresh water so yeah. they very well could be i mean i don't know all sorts of stuff lives in louisiana you never know but um that the amazon um you know besides the fishing like the people that was that was the game changer experience for me just being able to to go around and Go to some of the villages and then go up into the rainforest with with some of the people, um, and just seeing like how they live and how happy they are with nothing and how resourceful like everything in the Amazon has a uh, like a use for something specific. Like one tree might be used for you know healing uh, uh, like you know excess earwax in your ears or something, and one's for eye drops, and one is for uh, you know your acne and one is for parkinson's and there's just a plethora of very useful plants and and trees down there and seeing the knowledge of the people that know that it's just like they that's their education growing up part of is hey you should know uh when you have a cut you need to cut this branch off and then you're good or when you're thirsty just cut one of these vines and then you got two gallons of water um that yeah, was that's kind of crazy. That's, they don't need money. Yeah, it's you know, there's. I want to say it was a documentary about where the happiest people on earth live, and like huh. money and material things have nothing to do with someone being happy. That's that's for sure. And, yeah. You know, I think a lot of the times it's those places that they deal with struggle and they have to be resourceful. And they have to, you know, find their own ways to do things. It almost gives them a sense of purpose. That struggle is important, man. Yeah, for sure. That, that definitely makes, makes uh, it brings out humanity. And uh, seeing people down there just checking on their neighbors, you know. Uh, like a lot of the guides, they would just ride down a few miles in the morning and just say, you know, you doing okay? And, I mean, it's all in Portuguese, but... Hey, you doing okay, man? Still, still got all your limbs and doing all right. Okay, good to see you, brother. Good, to, good to know. Good deal. Yeah, and, and just everyone checking on each other. So when I was leaving the Amazon, I, I pretty much just gave away everything you know important that I had there. Um, I took back a couple reels, but I gave my rods, I gave my rain gear, um, my uh, my watch. I actually traded. I actually traded for. This uh, this killer jaguar tooth right here. That is the tooth of a jaguar, JT. Dude, that is awesome. That is, I want to. I wonder how much of that is actually like up in the gum line because that thing is so long. Yeah, like, I, I mean, w- that thing. I want to say half. Like you can kind of see a color. Yeah, right there. Difference but on still, it. Still, look at that. It's like serrated, almost like a shark tooth. That's what kind of caught me off guard when I felt it. I was like, ooh, that could kind of slice and dice yeah that that would mess you up big time you know it's places like this you know where they're they literally have to worry about these jaguars they did i and that's why that one's dead because my guide his name was g um 
I traded him a G-Shock watch for that. It was very fitting. But um, he uh, he killed four of them um, in the last couple of years. And um, every little village we went to had a dead skull or a cape or something up. Um, you know, a lot of those villages have chickens and pigs and dogs. And uh, it'd be just like uh, coyotes hanging out around a farm like that's just a natural food source for them so yeah. they well, gotta you know, take them out it's it's so crazy we we live in the states here and there's so many people that you know grow up into their 30s even their 40s that don't have to deal with death yeah i mean there's people that literally are 30 years old that have never had to deal with death they've never seen a you know a dead body they've never had a close family member pass away uh you know they've never killed an animal to eat they go to the grocery store they've never you know went fishing and cut cut a fish up themselves that you know, is they, so true they go eat sushi and it's one of those things you know when you have to deal with death when you have to deal you appreciate you, life you more. appreciate life more 100 percent. and you know that's something that has completely been lost in our society today i mean people are living longer i mean you know healthcare just can save so much nowadays and i mean now that you say it like that 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 kind of puts a perspective on why I think that they have such an appreciation down there because I, I don't know how long they live, but I'd imagine, you know, without good health care and, you know, so many things that can happen on a river um, that they lose a lot of people. So they're just checking on each other constantly and helping each other out and yeah, just glad sure. to be alive every day. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, I, I can't say that I've been around a lot of death, but I mean, I've had family members die. Uh, you know, I've, I've taken the life of animals that I appreciate, you know, the hunt that I went on. I appreciate the fact that I've taken that life and a lot of people have never dealt with that. And so it's just kind of, you know, it's all lost on them. The whole, the whole thought and process of life and death is just kind of, something that's in the back of their mind but it's not something they actually have to deal with deal with and so yeah i think i think that's one thing definitely you know countries and civilizations like that that you know they deal with that kind of stuff because aren't there some big saltwater crocs down there or is it the they have caimans caimans, black caimans Caimans, which get get big and they can lose you but i mean there's There's all sorts of other things piranhas um just they got weird little animals that, you know, that's where a lot of those poison dart frogs mm. come from. Um, they got little catfish things that'll swim up in your pee hole. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Uh, Isn't that where they have that little thing yeah. that swim in your pecker? <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, I mean, it, everything you see on river monsters, I think three quarters of the episodes are down there in the yeah. Amazon. So um, it's pretty bad. But just that, just that appreciation for life was something that, I think I needed to see, man, as a 32-year-old yeah. adult, like you're saying. Like, I just needed to go down there and see that. And uh, I want to go back for sure. And uh, if I go back, I'll I'll definitely try to visit some of the little uh, school villages or uh, village schools down there um, and just try to go see some of the kids, man. I, like, that's probably one of the happiest feelings I've ever had in the world is just giving to someone that it's not like – they um they can get by just fine with what they have but just giving it something useful like like there was this guy he had a he had a steak knife that had uh he'd kind of sharpened down and he had it inside like a paper towel sheath and that's what he's using to cut line with every day i mean i saw him for like days breaking that thing out and you know i had this nice knife on my belt and i was like he would probably flip out if i gave this to him you know (laughs) like he's getting a buy five with his steak knife that he's converted into like a a fishing knife or whatever but um when we got to the end of the trip i gave it to him and dude he was so pumped yeah so pumped to have that nice knife and then um i think it was his son 
uh, his son was like training to be a, a guide and uh he had never owned a rod and reel before um and so i gave him my spinning my spinning rod and dude he his eyes got like huge <laughs> got a fishing rod and reel down there on the amazon dude that is that is big that's like having a lamborghini yeah i mean he, <laughs> there's so many fish like if you're just fishing for substance that's down you're there food every day dude, man you can get food every day easy yes i mean it's it's one of those things. It's not hard to go catch food, you know, fish to eat for food down there. I mean, it's a little tougher to go catch a 20 pound peacock when you're targeting that. But oh, yeah. I mean, you're yeah. just down there trying to survive. If you're trying to get, dude, if you're trying to just eat, I mean, I don't see how you, you starve. <laughs> I, the, the cook on board the boat, she would catch uh, piranha on the back of the boat every day. We had, we had piranha. Uh, I think we had some weird catfish things too. But, it, but you just, toss something over the side of the boat and it, something's gonna come up <laughs> and eat it pretty quick but the the craziest fish that uh it's got a more of the elusive deal down there that uh they actually do target to eat is the arapaima you ever ah, seen one of those big ones giant yeah gigantic it's, it's kind of similar like to an alligator gar uh except they've got like a big suction mouth like a bass kind of mouth uh super smart you know for a fish articulating eyes and everything and just prehistoric um, and they're illegal to catch. You can't you can't catch them legally, but uh, the natives are allowed to to fish for them. Uh, but they don't really fish for them. They have these these spears, and they take these spears. They make these really hard spears out of this one wood. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but they'll they'll have these little floaties that they'll tie to ropes, and when they spear it, the uh, spearhead will come off into the the arapaima and then they'll they'll it's like the movie jaws you know yeah where they have to shoot it with the harpoon thing and have the barrels it's kind of like that and they just uh, kind of follow the floaty around yep. until they can get another spear in him and then that's it. just continue the process until they actually get the fish killed yeah and uh when, when they kill one of those that's like it's steak time they got big big old we ate we ate arapaima steaks for uh like three or four days, I got I got kind of tired of eating hair fine <laughs> actually, um, and it was so thick, it was like yeah. d- very dense. Um, but when they kill one of those, I mean, that's they can eat for a long time on an arapaima. Yeah. So, you know, one of my original ideas, kind of when we started this podcast, is I wanted to uh, collect. I, I wanted to collect, you know, broken rods. And uh, reels that could easily be repaired and, you know, put new tips on rods and stuff like that. And then take a trip to either the Amazon or like St. Lucia or one of the islands down there. Because, and what made me think this is because when I was on my honeymoon, there were just so many people that were fishing with, you know, Gatorade bottles with line wrapped around it. That's what everyone was fishing with and just no one had a fishing pole. And I just think it would be so cool, you know, as many broken rods as fishermen have every year, you know, to, to get in with somebody like Bass Pro or Academy or Cabela's and, you know, find a way to uh, get all their broken rods, put tips on them, and, you know, just take them and, and give them out down at some sort of a country like that. I thought about that when I was and down there. That's one of my ideas that, that I've always wanted to do. But I just, you know, I just don't have time to do it. You don't have time to do it. But maybe one of these days we'll we'll get the time and we'll have to go back down yeah, there. Yeah, we need some help with that. But one of those places like you're talking about where they'd really appreciate it, you'd feel so good. Oh, yeah. Like, you'd, it'd be the best feeling in the world. It would make their life so much easier. I mean, you know, going from a Gatorade bottle with line wrapped around it to having even a crappy fishing pole. Yeah, I mean, just so that you can make, you know, twenty yard cast compared to being able to throw the line ten or fifteen feet, which I'll be honest, some of them can really throw the line. Oh, I know those Gatorade bottles, but absolutely they can. It still would be, you know, a huge help and just improve their life so much. Yeah, and I kind of i I thought about that while I was down there, but um, you know, I was taking the the braid off of one of my my reels when i got down there i had like 30 pound braid and uh you know i just like tossed it whatever 
He's going to put 65 on him. Well, one of the guys saw that. He's like, no, no, no. He takes it. And um, I had a, our translator on the boat, Franz, uh, Franzi, as we called him. He said, oh, he's going to take that, and he's going to make uh, a net out of it in the off season." He's gonna he's gonna take all this braid and he's gonna make a, a net, so he can catch fish in other ways. That's awesome! I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, I'm just this dumb American coming over throwing my braid, and uh, <laughs> there's this resourceful, you know, forest ninja. Uh, that's gonna forest make ninja. This, <laughs> make this net, dude. It's amazing how you know you've seen the movie Avatar. Yeah. That's what it reminded me of. They 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 make these little calls when they're out there to like the monkeys and the and the birds and they call back, and it's like, dude, they are just living with nature every day, connected, yeah, you know, fully connected. So, uh, it, it was it was a big life changer for me. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, you didn't get stung by any of those uh, army or carpenter ants or what's the what's the ant they have down there? Oh, that, like a bull ant or something that just hurts so bad. No, I never even saw one of those. Um, I saw some weird bugs when we went up into the forest, um, but I didn't see any, like, really creepy. I saw some weird spiders and stuff, but never, like, giant ants. I saw just, like, regular size ants, and uh, I never got stung by anything. Actually, I take that back. I woke up one night, and I had this big uh, bug in my armpit, and it bit me. I, I don't know what kind of bug it was. <laughs> it was, like, some sort of big beetle. Uh, that freaked me out. Like, I couldn't really sleep after that. But other than that, I never got bit by a single mosquito, uh, by any kind of fly. They had a ton of wasps, but I never got stung. So That's good. I came out. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a lot better to not get bit by creepy oh, yeah. Amazon bugs. That was nice. And the only scar I got was from a big peacock bass just holding it. My biggest of the trip was a 16-pounder. Wow. And... Um, he uh he shook and when he shook it's not like holding a bass like where you can kind of lock their jaws out they're they're a cichlid species um so they don't really have that that where you can just lock them down so he shook and they have the same kind of teeth as a bass so there's just they're just voracious and he ripped a big part of my skin off my thumb yeah well so we talked to, we talked about a lot of the trip but let's talk about the actual fishing part uh you know, you said you caught a 16-pounder. Yeah. What well, what else did you catch? What was the big fish for the trip, the, for, for the, the whole, the whole boat. group? So, yeah, how the boat worked was um, there was, uh, I think, eight or, there was eight or nine people on the boat. And um, some of the guys were from Texas. They were all really cool. And um, uh, the biggest fish of the whole trip was 17 pounds. Wow. So we didn't. The iconic deal is to catch one over 20, like catch a 20-pounder. Uh, that's like catching a 10-pound bass here in the States. Um, but nobody caught one over 20. Uh, there was a lot of like 8 to 12-pounders caught, which, I mean, let me tell you, an 8-pound peacock <laughs> bass, when it hits a top water and takes off, it is something to behold. Like when they decide they want to thrash it, I'm talking, they may hit the top water and it goes five feet this way. And then they may hit it again and it goes another five feet this way. And then they might decide to hit it again. And actually eat and it. And just, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just oh, like drag stripping. And depending on if you're around cover or not. Uh, dude, the second or third eight pounder I hooked on a top water blew up on it and it's just shocking it probably hit it like 20 feet from the boat and i was just, oh my gosh it was still my first day fishing for peacocks i was a little a little shocked and um the bait flies back at me and uh, i'm like what the heck happened you know i look at it and the middle treble hook and split ring is missing <laughs> it ripped and this was after upgrading the split rings and hooks to the heaviest gauge I've ever seen. Like that the heaviest insane. gauge that would actually make sense to still give it action. And it's bent it out and ripped it off. Dude, so <laughs> those giant peacock are almost like the like the amberjack that we were fishing yes. for last year, a couple yes. years back. 
Yeah. They just destroy everything. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. Yeah, just a little orange fish of destruction. A little orange fish of destruction. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite an emo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're they're beautiful, man. Too the the colors on them are just insane, and it's it's a really awesome fish. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, I've always thought it's kind of kind of wild that uh, they get so colorful down in the Amazon, as dirty as some of that water is. You know, our yeah. bass here they turn super white and ugly when you get them in a muddy or a chalky uh, pond or lake. Yeah, and, these are know, bright. Man, they're just so pretty, and I mean, they can be in the nastiest water yeah. ever down there. There's like five species too. There's uh, there's butterfly, spotted, um, I think tiger, and then there's two other ones that are like pretty small. They don't really get bigger than five pounds. That yeah, they're all pretty. That's awesome, man. Uh, so what do they mostly forage on? What's I was trying to figure that out. And I think there there's some sort of pink bait fish that they really like. It's uh, it kind of swim. It's kind of like a top minnow, um, and you'd see them chasing those things around at the surface. And I finally got a look at them, and, they, and I saw these these pink jerk baits on board the boat. It's like a two big boxes full of them, and I was like, what? They they just took like a pink sharpie and and. Sharpie, just colored a white jerk yeah. bait pink. Yeah, and I was like, "What is this all about?" And then I saw those, and it made sense. Um, so it's just like a long sardine-looking thing that's pink. Um, and then after that, I don't know. I, I saw one chasing a flying fish for sure. <laughs> um, so they just they kind of eat like a bass. They'll eat anything. Yeah, dude. They'll eat a bluegill, eat a crawfish, they eat a shad, like whatever comes their way. Yeah, they're smoking it. Did y'all ever have any like crazy big catfish or anything hit a top water or not a top water? Uh, Winston, the owner of Favorite Rods, uh, that, that invited me on the trip, he had a giant catfish on. Uh, he went out after dark, and the problem with the piranhas down there, you try to catch a catfish, and the piranhas just like eat your bait right off the hook. Uh. So, but the crazy thing is the piranhas go away at night when it's dark like as soon as the sun goes down they stop biting so um he stayed out there out past dark and and uh hooked a really big catfish took him out uh into the middle of the river took all the line off popped everything um it was giant never stopped it so dang i don't know that's that's like straight up. Uh, what's that fishing show we were talking about earlier? River monsters. That's river monsters. It was like there. river monsters, man. Yeah. There's no telling what's out there. And then he had a peacock on the second to last day that had to be over twenty pounds. It uh, it hit a spinner bait. <laughs> <laughs> we were running low on lures, and I had I had this box right here, and this is the same box I had in Mexico, and I I kind of you know put some bass stuff in it, and. Uh, he was like, I feel like I feel like just tying on a spinner bait, and he's uh, he's friends with Jimmy Houston that's been down there a bunch. He's like, I just feel like catching one on a spinner bait just to take a picture to send it to Jimmy Houston. I was like, all right, I got a couple in there, check them out. So uh, he puts the spinner bait on, and then he catches one. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so awesome, you know, because all <laughs> they tell you is chop chop down there, yeah. chop chop, chop chop, chop chop, and the occasional jerk bait, throw some jerk baits. Um. But he's he he'd already caught a lot of fish, so he's like, I'm just gonna throw a spinner bait, no chop chop for me. He lets it sink to the bottom, and we had just doubled up on eight pounders, for the cast before. As soon as he gets to the bottom, wham, and then pow, pops the braid at the spool. Dang, dude, I'm talking trucking. I mean, he didn't even have time. Oh there was, no. <laughs> Holy cow! Dude, yeah, that's crazy. So, it, that it, was the biggest. It's amazing peacock. how powerful a fish can be. Like they fight to the the death, really. I yeah, mean, that's, that's what they're doing. That's that's too so. cool, man. I, I'm pumped that you got to go on it. I'm pumped you still went. When I know. Everything is going on. I know, man. <laughs> Actually, I felt the best I've felt since my diagnosis was while I was in the Amazon. I think it's just the amount of rest. The uh, the the rainforest is right there, so like the oxygen is really high, um, and just being around great people and just kind of in a relaxed environment was really yeah. 
the best thing for me. Just having meals cooked for you all the time, oh. not having to worry about uploading videos. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the other thing. I was disconnected from the internet <laughs> and then looking at a uh, phone device. I, I was I had one of those Garmin inReaches that you use. Um, but uh, other than that, I really didn't have any communication, so it was good for me, man. Yeah. It was good. Well, that's good. I'm glad you yeah. went. I'm, I'm glad you had a good time. I wish you'd have caught one of those 20-pounders, but hey, hey 16 is not shabby, dude. It's going to keep me coming back, dude. <laughs> like, the fish that I lost and the fish that I saw lost is what's going to bring me back, so. Yeah. So, how many guys were fishing down there with you? Uh, it was just uh, me and Winston at first and the camera guy, and then... Um, it was like eight more dudes that came after nice. that. They came in on a float plane, and um, and then we all flew out on a float plane after that, and then flew back on the big big bird to the states. Nice. So his uh, favorite going to be posting those on their YouTube that with yeah. the camera guy, and then you'll be posting your videos too. Have you started posting yours yet? I I've only posted the vlog of me arriving, so the juicy stuff. Oh. Well, by the time everybody sees this, yes, yeah. uh, you can go back and watch. But I think, um, yeah, favorite's gonna post all theirs, and the, and uh, Winston hooked the camera guy in the head. Oh, with a chopper. Ooh, all the way past the barb. Oh man, like sticking into it, the skull. Yeah, it Ugh. was real bad. And the guide, um, he got it out in like less than ten seconds. Like saw it, grabbed a piece of rope, wrapped it around the hook, ripped it out of his skull. Less than ten <laughs> seconds before he could freak out. <laughs> yes. I think that was the plan. Yeah, just like, oh, this is yeah. bad. We better get this out before he freaks out. Yeah, I don't know how many times you've done it, but yeah, yeah he, he did it like a pro. So that's crazy. Tune man. Into that. I hooked myself in the knuckle one time with a big swim bait hook, and like I felt the tip oh, of the I remember hook that, go into the bone. Oh no, sir! And, uh, it was kind of the same thing. Like before, I could even think about it. I didn't even get line. I was by myself. I just grabbed it and ripped it out. Just, uh, savage. Like mode. I just, but it wasn't past the barb, luckily, because it was like right on the hard part of my knuckle, and so like. But it was in that but, bone. But area. yeah, but the, the the tip of the hook was definitely like in that's, the bone. That's and creepy. It's like, <laughs> it's like you could hear it pop out of the bone. It's like, oh, that's that was pretty rough. Oh. But yeah, those those big treble hooks are nothing to mess with. I'm just glad I didn't get hooked. I didn't hook anybody, so it was it was all good. It was yeah. All good. So. Cool, so. man. Well, uh, before we get to my part of this podcast, let me change the batteries out real quick on this recorder. Yeah, I, I think, think that's uh, a good idea. I think you probably ought to change your battery out, too, on this uh, camera. Yeah. yeah, phase two. We'll go, we'll go to the uh, the next part of the stories here yep. on the amazing world adventures of <laughs> John Thomas R. Larkin and Justin Rackley. Yep, we'll get these batteries changed and be right back. We were just We were about to change our batteries out. And we realized that we're already at an hour for uh, this here podcast. Yeah, so we should, deuce, we should deuce this piece. I think what we're going to do, uh, I think we're going to stop here with this. We're going to let uh, Justin's Amazon trip be one podcast all by itself. It's and juicy enough. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to start over here in about five minutes, and we're going to work on a new podcast that uh, we're going to talk about my elk hunt a little bit. Yes, so. which you, uh, everyone here on the visual spectrum can go check out on the next video. And i gotta, I got to literally charge the next battery to be put in. We'll make a next episode for you. But this has been pretty awesome to talk about. I could go on all day about the Amazon baby. Dude, yeah. It's been awesome. I'm, I know I'm your story is going to be the same way. I'm pumped to get to hear your story. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you got to go. But everybody, go check out the podcast on iTunes, Hook and Arrow. Yep. Down in the description, if you want to just make it easy on yourself, go down there. It's going to be linked where you can just catch up on all the old episodes here. Yeah, leave us a rate and a review. It doesn't matter if it's good or not, good or bad. I'd prefer like four stars or more. But yeah, I mean, just if you something just, above one. Yeah, if you just sure. really don't like us, I mean, I guess you can tell us, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> just be honest, because we're being honest with you, and we'll see you on the next one. See you later.